This is a quick introduction to using the University of Mississippi Libraries site. It's very important that you use the University of Mississippi Library resources through the University of Mississippi Library website, as you see here. If you attempt to use these resources by going directly to them, say through Google, they will often not work, as they will require a login to determine that you are an authorized student, faculty, or staff user. Using the University of Mississippi Library site is the only way to guarantee your access to these resources. You can either come directly to libraries.olmiss.edu, or you can follow the library link on the main University of Mississippi page. A simple Google search for University of Mississippi Libraries will also work in a pinch. If you need assistance from a librarian, there are several options that you can take advantage of. First, the library has a chat service that is available from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Fridays. You can use this to ask any questions of a live librarian, anything from directional questions, questions about the building to help with your research or anything else. The chat can be accessed using this pop out nub here. You simply enter your question, send it to the operator, and you'll receive a response. When chat is not available, it will tell you so, and you can always look at our frequently asked questions in this window to see if there's anything that we can help you with. Additionally, there is an Ask a Librarian link right here. Following this link, you can see we have the chat version available. It's a slightly wider chat, but otherwise identical. There is also our frequently asked questions, and you can use this to find a librarian. If you'd like to speak to a specific librarian, all of the librarian's names and phone numbers are listed here, as well as their areas of specialization. Finally, you can see that we have some basic contact information here. This phone number will connect to the library's front desk. This is a good number to call if you have questions about library fines or fees or hours. And somebody should answer as long as the library is open. This is our general email address. You can send reference questions here after hours, and we will respond to them as soon as we can. To do basic research, we use OneSearch up here. You can see some of my previous searches. We'll go ahead and do a quick search for college football. One search searches a large volume of materials available at the university, including books, CDs, and DVDs, physical materials, as well as eBooks, journal articles, newspaper articles, and the like. You can see that we have over 3 million results here, but it's very easy to alter this search so that it is uh, more in line with what you're looking for. For instance, if you are interested in finding a physical book, you can limit to physical books, like so. And you will see in this case that we have bowled over big time college football from the 60s to the BCS era, a history of college football to 2009 that is available either as an ebook or as a physical book. If you're interested in reading the ebook, you can simply click on this link here. And it will take you to our authentication page to prove that you are a University of Mississippi user. And if you've already authenticated, it will bring you to the ebook interface that you can read and download the book, like so. If you'd like to view the information on the physical book, you can simply click here and it will take you through. 
if you would like to locate this book on the physical shelves, you'll need the call number here. You can also see if the book is available. If it's checked out or otherwise unavailable, there will be a note here. You can also see which floor it's located on over here. And if you click on the floor name, it will show you a map of the floor, like so. You can see how each of these pink shelf units is labeled with letters. Those letters correspond to the letters in the call number. By matching the letters in the call number to the letters on the map, you can find the general area that your book is located and then use the signage provided to find the specific book. If you're ever looking for a physical book and you're unable to find it, go to the main library desk and report the issue. They will be able to assist you. You also have the ability to request physical items for pickup. This involves asking a library employee to go and get the book for you and holding it at the main circulation desk. We are happy to do that uh, if you're willing to fill out the form. However, occasionally this will not appear. If you would still like for the library to pull the materials for you, you can either ask in the chat box, which is conveniently right over here, or you can ask in person at the main desk. If, however, you're interested in finding articles that you can read immediately, you can very quickly reconfigure the search to do so by removing the print books at UM Libraries restriction, you can look for instead full text articles. We can limit ourselves to full text online here. And then you also can limit by content type. In this case, you can see that we have newspaper articles, newsletters, magazine articles, journal articles, eBooks, and more. Depending on your assignment, you may need to use a different type of resource. Many assignments require you to use peer-reviewed journal articles. So we can click on a peer-reviewed journal article there. And you can see that this will return about 25,000 results. If you are interested in putting further limits on your search, you can also do that. One of the limits that I find the most useful is limiting by years. This is especially useful if you're interested in something contemporary. For instance, if you're writing about college football, but you're not interested in the history of college football before the year 2000, using the 10-year limit could be very useful to you. I recommend using five or 10 years only. One or three years are generally very restrictive unless you're interested in an extremely contemporary event. So we can see here that we have about 8,000 results. Many of these results are about injuries. But you can see there are some other subjects included as well. This one is about gambling. And this one is about demand and scheduling. This one's about marching bands. If you are satisfied that this is restricted enough, you can begin looking at articles. But if you are interested in further modifying your search, you can do that very easily. For instance, this first article is talking about concussions. If we are interested in learning more about concussions, you can add them to the search. And you can see that we now have 834 results. Notice that even though we did a new search, full text, journal article, and 10 years are all included. If you want to alter those, you'll have to remove or add them like so. So if we look at this article from the American Journal of Sports Medicine, we can read it in several ways. We can click on the title. We can view it as a PDF. We can view it online. Viewing it online typically will give you something like this. You can see the entire article available with its charts and graphs. And you can also see its citations and references. This will generally not display page numbers. 
if you are interested in seeing page numbers, then you'll want the PDF. The PDF is not always available in the same place. It differs depending on which database vendor is giving us our information. But in this case, you can see that we're able to take a look at this. It even includes the advertisement for cuff mend rotator cuff augmentation systems that appeared in the paper version. But here we have the PDF. As you can see here, everything is formatted much better than what we were looking at before. All of the formatting and page numbers are preserved, but the same information is present. Now, if you're interested in using any of these articles further, there are some tools built into OneSearch that can help you. For instance, you can use this quote mark icon here to generate a citation. If we generate an APA style citation, like so you can see that it will come up here. Here's your citation. Now, it's important to note that these citations are generated automatically meaning that they can contain errors. It is strongly recommended that you double check all citations that you receive from this generator to make sure that they don't contain any errors. It's also worth asking your instructor whether or not any URLs or DOI links provided are appreciated in their citations. Some instructors prefer these, others prefer them not. You can email this article to yourself. What that will do is generate a citation if you want one, and also email you a link so that you can get back to the article. If you're interested in generating citations and emailing several articles, or even several articles and several books at once, you can use the bookmark feature here. By placing these items into our bookmarks, we will temporarily set them aside you can see here. Now, if we were to do a new search, the contents of our bookmarks would remain. You can add those in as well. So by trying out different searches, different search terms, and different search limits, you can take whatever items interest you and put them in your bookmarks folder. As you can see clearly stated here, this is a temporary folder, and the saved items will be cleared when you leave. The amount of time it takes for the saved items to be cleared depends on your computer settings and your cookies. Generally speaking, I strongly recommend emailing the contents of this folder to yourself as soon as you're finished researching, even if you're go just going to take a break. So in this case, I can generate citations for everything at once. You can see I have my APA citations for everything. These links will allow you to read the full text of the article. Since we have it limited to full text, you shouldn't get any articles that you can't read. Although if anything like that does come up, that's an opportunity for you to ask a librarian. And then by using the email function, you can put in an email. It doesn't have to be your school email. It can be a personal email if you want. You can also include a message if you are worried that you won't know where the mail came from, and you will have to prove that you are not a robot. If it doesn't believe you, as it didn't believe me, you will have to choose items in a CAPTCHA. And then you can send the item. you will receive this green message if the email is sent successfully. Generally speaking, the emails um, will go through to your inbox fairly well, but it's worth checking your spam if they don't immediately appear. Now, OneSearch is generally very good for starting research. However, there are other 
databases and other sources of information which do not appear in OneSearch. This is usually because they use a system that is incompatible with OneSearch or sometimes the licensing terms under which the library has access to them don't allow for them to be included within OneSearch. Generally speaking, there are two ways that you can find these other databases. The first is using our database A to Z. This is useful if you know the name of the database that you're looking for. For instance, if we were interested in finding the statistics database Statista, which is not included within OneSearch, we could go to S and then simply find Statista. As you can see, it's available right there. And then clicking on that will bring the database up. Occasionally, there will be an error. Ordinarily, a simple refresh is enough to put you through. If the error persists, always contact your library. The other option is to use one of our research guides. The research guides are curated groups of resources designed to support either certain majors or certain classes made by librarians. For instance, as you can see, we have a business administration guide here, as well as a marketing guide here. If you're interested in doing research along those lines, this suggests a number of different databases that you could use. Many of these are not available within OneSearch. For example, Mergent Online is not. And it also gives you the contact information for the librarian that specializes in that area. You can see that Statista is available here as well. If you are doing research in a subject area that you're not familiar with, or if you are doing research in your major but are very early in your academic career, it can be a good idea to look at one of these guides. Not only will it give you information about resources that you could use, it will also give you information about the librarian who specializes in that area and who is best equipped to help you. We have course guides as well. These are created on demand. And they are in roughly alphabetical order by the four letter code. So in this case, if you were looking for a basic writing guide, you can see that we have one for writing 101 and 100. And we also have an advanced one for writing 102. Looking at the guide, you can see that it is structured in the same way. This one for writing 100 and 101 is structured around giving students access to things that they can use to choose topics like CQ Researcher and ProCon, as well as other materials that they can use to find information like Statista. Conversely, the Writing 102 guide is designed such that you have to choose your theme. So for example, if you were in a business theme 102, you would choose business up here. And you can see it gives you a suggested list of resources to use. And once again, Statista is here. Just as a quick aside, and as an example of something that does not work with OneSearch, Statista allows you to find statistics on a variety of issues, including college football. Now, while we found some good information about college football in OneSearch, we were not able to find any of these because they are not indexed within OneSearch. So if you are interested in, say, the level of public interest in college football in the United States, you wouldn't have been able to find that within OneSearch. But you can see here, this is good information for someone who is attempting to argue that college uh, football issues are important. See that there is a plurality of people who are at least a casual fan of the sport. There are also individual reports 
and overall topics that you can look at here. Topics simply collect a variety of individual statistics in one place, divides them into the NCAA, student athletes, etc. And a report allows you to look at a large number of statistics together bound into a single document. So in this case, you can open it as a PDF. and read the entire book. It's generally put together in a very easy to read format, with large text, lots of illustrations, lots of charts and graphs. So even though it is 60 pages, it is a much shorter, breezier read. So you can see NCAA expenses, all sorts of good and interesting college inf uh, sports information. So with Statista as an example, you can see why it's always a good idea to check additional databases and resources beyond simply what is available in OneSearch. Whether it's for a writing class or any other class, you can use the guides or if you know the name of your database, the database A to Z page, in order to find additional and extremely useful resources not available in OneSearch for whatever reason. So that is a basic overall introduction to the University of Mississippi Libraries site. There are, of course, many more advanced features that we could talk about, things like interlibrary loan to get books and articles sent in from other libraries, the library's hours, some of our programming and upcoming events. You can see a few here. But for now, that will serve to give you a quick and grounded basis for doing library searches at the undergraduate level here at the University of Mississippi.